title of this section is Appeal, the final section of the poem, and Hindley never stopped appealing um, for her case um, while she was alive. She initially appealed to the House of Lords and then to the European courts, but she was unsuccessful. So the appeal um, title kind of encapsulates how she spent the remainder of her life. Um, what Hindley then does here in this kind of listing of different capital punishments, which she um, does in the first part of the this section, um, is she explores different methods of capital punishment throughout times and throughout um, across cultures. Um, and she's questioning whether or not these would have been an appropriate punishment for her. Now, um, a contextual link for this is that just prior to the Moores murders trials, um, the UK had actually abolished capital punishment. Therefore, there was no long, it was no longer legal um, to use the death sentence. So Hindley just kind of escaped um, being sentenced to death for her actions and for her role in the murders. Um, what she's doing, though, is she's kind of listing these different capital punishments and then asking, well, is it better, really, to be alive rather than be um, punished through capital punishment if life means life means life? So is this better than capital punishment? Is life imprisonment better than capital punishment? Um, so let's have a look at some of these capital punishments she's talking about. Um, if I'd been stoned to death. Now, stoning is something that was um, popular in kind of biblical times. Um, it's sometimes still used in the Middle East. It's often used against women. Um, for things like infidelity, um, it is used against men as well, but it's quite kind of like, uh, famously known for that, but it's quite a kind of old fashioned way of, um, killing someone for their actions. Um, she looks at the electric chair, um, which is quite a popular, um, punishment still in the US. Um, it was never used in the UK, I believe. Um, lethal injection, she talks about. She talks about um, decapitation. If my peroxide head on the block. So the block obviously refers to um, being decapitated. And her peroxide head is referring to her hair. And that kind of image that was made so famous by the media in her their representations of her and also her mugshot, which became kind of infamous as well. Um, then, Hindley suggests a, well, Duffy, via Hindley, suggests a rather unusual form of uh, capital punishment, which is her tongue torn out at the root. Um, that would suggest that, although it's not a kind of, capital punishment as we know it was a common one but it's suggesting that what would happen if she'd had her kind of voice taken away and um maybe she feels that she has because she can't appeal and no one's listening to her and maybe it would be better to not be able to speak than to be ignored and to be given a, this life imprisonment um, and then it kind of escalates to a list of weapons. If a bullet, a hammer, a knife. And she's kind of questioning if any of these weapons, if anything, would be better than what she's currently experiencing, which is this kind of limbo um, in between kind of living and death where she's just in prison and she has no freedom. Um... So, here as well, if life means life means life, uh, the repetition of means life has a kind of 
chanting effect. So it's as though she's asking it to herself over and over again. Life means life means life. It also sounds almost like the echoing of a sentence around a kind of courtroom. Or you could say it sounds like um, a kind of protest chant because many people, many members of the public believe that she should stay in prison for life and that they would have been reinforcing this message that life means life and that's it. Um, the final couplet, um, Hinley is kind of reflective about what she's done to us all and to herself. Um, as all, I think, could mean the kind of the public, because the public got very swept up in this idea that Henley had kind of wronged people, that she was a serial killer, that she was not feminine, that she was a female serial killer, which was very unusual, that she couldn't be loving or nurturing, and they got very carried away and obsessed with this um, idea that women could do that. So it's what has she done to the public? It's also what has she done to her victims and their families? But interesting, she uses um, the word us. So she actually puts herself with them as well because this is a... Um, third person pronoun, I believe. So, she's including herself in that as well. What, what did I do to us? All of us. And to herself. So, she is reflecting on her own um, personal experience. Why has she done this? Why has she done this to herself? Questioning it. And she's kind of acknowledging that she's brought this upon herself as well. And then in the final line, she says, when I was the devil's wife. Now, this kind of firmly cements us in the past. She's saying that she is no longer the devil's wife, but she was the devil's wife at a particular point in time. And that time has now passed. And she's kind of looking back on that and wondering to what end did she do this?